I'd like to review with you uh, or summarize with you the Mars and Venus in the bedroom key concepts for the differences between men and women when it comes to sex. This is so important so that we don't get frustrated or feel rejected by the opposite sex. Because while men also want romance and women also want sex, we usually start from the opposite place and when we want to connect. Women first want to feel loved and romanced and connected to be open to sex or to long for sex. Whereas men need to feel aroused and have sex to feel connected and to feel their hearts and to feel romance. So you hear on dating apps or on early dating, uh, women get frustrated with men who want only sex. It's natural for a man to start with sex. And men get frustrated with women who don't put out because they don't understand that women need to feel connected first. Women need to feel you like me. I feel supported and loved and romanced and connected and now I'm open to having sex with you. And men feel like I want to have sex with you so I can feel close and connected. So early in a relationship, men kind of get the concept that women need the romance first and they're willing to wait. But a man during the course of a relationship has to keep giving the woman that same romance because a woman always needs to first feel connected to want sex. And women, we have to understand that men connect through sex. And when we tell them no to sex, they feel really hurt and they feel really rejected because that's how they naturally come in touch with their more feeling side. You know, because a man is using his head all day and he's working and the way that he unwinds and comes in touch with his feeling side is through being inside of a woman, touching a woman and pleasing a woman. Now, people are not consciously aware of these things, but when you hear John Gray explain this or other um, sexual therapists or authors explain this, you kind of see that it, that it makes some sense. So one of the quotes is, women love great sex as much as men, but to feel turned on, women have many more requirements. Even if a woman doesn't feel loved, but feels the possibility of being loved, she can begin to feel her deep desires for sex. Generally speaking, however, a man needs only the opportunity and the place to become aroused. That is so important. And I want to say this again, that just as a woman needs love to open up to sex, a man needs sex to open up to love. I think understanding this difference is really, really important. And I think that men more easily get that women need this, but I think women more easily feel put off by the man just wanting sex. So maybe both parties are equally having difficulty understanding the other side, but this is so important because it's, Usually a man feels rejected when a woman says no and a woman feels used by the man just wanting sex. So I would say that men need to romance the woman before wanting to stick it in and women need to be more receptive and just have sex even if they're not in the mood because through great sex they will enliven and nurture their relationship. Um, we have to, in a relationship or in the courtship dance, be attentive to the needs of the other person. Realize that when it comes to sex, often they're very opposite from our own needs. Okay, so let's continue. The hidden reason a man is so much in a hurry to have sex is that through sex, a man is able to feel again. Through sex, a man's heart begins to open up. 
that's why he really wants it okay but I know as a woman I have that feeling too like oh you just want my body you don't I want to know that you like me before I'm willing to give you my body and so I do have requirements like the book says <laughs> I do have many more requirements before I have sex with someone I want to feel to some extent that this man is interested in me and that he has done some things for me before I open to sex. It's definitely true. Uh, speaking as a woman, yes. <laughs> and I also am aware that the man really wants to have sex and that I have to acknowledge my desire for him, even if I'm not having sex, that I have to let him know that I want him and that I desire him. Um, it's kind of a tricky thing that I'm still practicing myself. So, um, he just goes on and on more about why men um, become... Now, here's another good one I like, because he used to always say that a way uh, to a man's heart is through his stomach. And I never agreed with that. I always thought it was through his cock. <laughs> and John Gray said that. When mom said that the way to a man's heart was through his stomach, she was about four inches too high. <laughs> yep, I would have to agree with that. So that would be the end of chapter one. Now let's start with chapter two, sex and passion. And that a man has to understand what makes him most happy in bed is not necessarily what makes her most happy in bed that a woman's needs are dramatically different from his in bed how so women tend to like a man with a slow hand we want our partner to touch us everywhere outside our body and get us all turned on because we're slower to warm up in our genital genital area. We're slower to warm up. So if you go right to my genital area before it's warmed up, it's going to feel gropy and not good. So, you know, touch me everywhere else and get me turned on before you go to my genital area. So you want to use a slow hand and move closer and closer gradually to the more sensitive areas. Whereas a man is just tortured if you start stroking his thighs forever. He's like, just grab it. Just grab it, okay? Grab my, can I say cock on YouTube? Uh, he wants the woman to go right directly to his most erogenous, most sensitive spot. That's what he's yearning for. So a, a woman wants a man with a slow hand and a man wants a woman with a fast hand. Okay, again, totally the opposite. And so here's kind of a key, more deeper part is that a man, ex um, I want to quote this, a man experiences pleasure primarily as a release of sexual tension. A woman experiences sex in an opposite way. For her, the great joys of sex correspond to a gradual buildup of tension. The more she can feel her desire for sex, the more fulfilling it is. I can attest to that because um, a man gets hard right away and he just he's going to enjoy the sex. He's really wanting that release. And for me, what, uh, cause I think a man gets turned on right away as much as he's going to be turned on pretty much. But for me, I feel my buildup. I feel my arousal building and some men can build it more than other men. And the more my arousal builds, the happier I feel like this guy's gotten me so turned on. I experience such pleasure in a man building up my arousal and that takes time and it takes him having done for things for me before we even got to the bedroom, um, the trust, the receptivity, um, the trust that I feel for him, how much he's trying to please me, me being receptive to him, him being attentive to me, him being patient with me, all these things just build me up and build me up and build me up 
more and more and more and the more I'm built up the greater it is for me the orgasm isn't even the greatest thing about sex although I have great orgasms for me the greatest pleasure of being with a man is seeing how much he can build me up so again during sex a man is seeking to empty out while a woman is seeking to be filled up he doesn't need much help in getting excited he needs help in releasing or letting go of his excitement. During sex, he has to end his excitement while a woman seeks to extend her excitement to more deeply feel her inner longing. Totally. <laughs> that's why I really like this book because it isn't just about techniques. It's about the deeper things that really make sex great. Now, I... Um, a little bit misunderstood or misexplained the release of tension so he explains that a man when a man enters a woman he immediately feels a release of tension as he enters her and then as he pulls back to experience the tension again and then he plunges forward to release the tension again that during intercourse a man will release tension every time he moves in and so he can keep feeling that release of tension that connection to that wholeness, that his feeling side that has been neglected, the bare landscape of his soul as he enters the softness and warmth of a woman, which connects him again to his feeling side and he gets that release of tension through entering her every time. Um, I would say that I feel, well, I'm curious to see what he says, but um, I could see that. And when every time a man enters me, I feel um, like taken or um, surrendered or um, wanted. Uh, let's go and continue and see what he has to say. Okay, he doesn't go into that. But then he explains just as a man needs to, just as a man forgets to feel and through having sex with a woman, he gets in touch with his feeling side a woman often forgets to be in her body and be in touch with her deeper or more central desires as she goes throughout the day being busy and that um, through having sex she again comes in touch with her pleasure side with her ability to feel pleasure and with her desires now a lot of women um, don't want to have sex until they're in the mood and this is really advised against because a woman can easily go throughout the day without being in touch with her sensual sexual side so some people will recommend that a woman has sex anyway because when she starts having sex she will enjoy it uh, john gray puts it a little bit of a different way um, he says that well when a man focuses on a woman in a caring way then she feels relieved of her pressure to care for others and she can begin to feel her sexual desire again it's as though she doesn't even know she wants the stimulation until she gets it as a man touches her body and the non-erogenous zones bordering the places where she's not usually touched she automatically begins to feel her need to be touched in the erogenous zones during great sex a woman's desire gradually increases the secret of great sex is for the man to slowly tease a woman to increase her sexual desire and i would say that is definitely the case so a woman can either make a decision to let herself be touched in this way or the man can create a situation where she will be more relaxed and be in tune with her sexual desire and so again if a woman says no to sex it just could be that she's just out of touch with her natural sexual desire and she needs to give herself a little bump and a little push to get there because ultimately great sex is good for the body it's good for the soul and it's good for the relationship so I'm going to stop this video here I'm going to go through this whole book so I just summarized chapters one and two um, so let me just pause the video and I will be right back. Okay, chapter three, how to increase a woman's sexual pleasure. 
a woman needs to relax so that she can enjoy great sex whereas a man wants to have great sex so he can relax so what can a man do to increase a woman's sexual pleasure and well i want to acknowledge there are men who don't care about a woman's sexual pleasure either because they're not aware that women are very different from men or they don't care or they're just selfish lovers but the majority of men do want to please a woman sexually and hopefully ladies who are you're watching this have a partner like this and if you don't it's just really nice to hear what um, an attentive partner would do for you sexually so that you know what you can expect and kind of think about how this might feel if this is not something that you're getting. So a woman wants to be teased or gradually led to the place where she's longing to be touched. I, uh, some of you may know that I'm an escort. I do, um, I have really had to learn to pay attention specifically to what my body needs because I have so many partners and I have not so many, but I have frequently a new partner and I need to be able to explain what I like and whereas a man likes it if I go right to his crotch and grab it they usually know I don't want to be like have just my boobs grabbed or my my in between my thighs grabbed right away I like it when a man touches me like all over my back you know my booty maybe and gradually just touches me closer and closer and don't touch my most sensitive areas until I'm warmed up enough that I'm ready. Otherwise, it just doesn't feel good. If guys are listening, it just feels unpleasant. It feels too gropey. It just feels, you want to have, I want, there has to be a lot of blood flow. This is what it is. Um, Mentally, I'm right here, like, I want to have sex with this guy. But my body isn't right there. It's kind of like when you're running, if you're a runner like I am, it takes a few minutes of running before your body is, like, really um, warmed up. You might do some warm-ups, some slow running. You have to warm up before you can sprint. You have to warm your body up. Your lungs have to get warmed up, and it takes time. You want to sprint, but you have to warm up. And that's how a woman's body naturally is. It has to warm up, and that takes time. And it takes a certain process, just like being ready to sprint. And if I were to start sprinting before I'm warmed up, it would be really painful in my lungs. I might get a muscle cramp. It just wouldn't feel good. Whereas if I'm warmed up, it's going to feel really good to run fast. That's just an analogy. So, I if a man touches me in the most sensitive areas before I'm warmed up, it's quite unpleasant, and it's um, de-arousing, like it's ugh. So my arousal goes negative. Okay, like it or not, that's how women's bodies work. I'm just trying to explain it. Now this is really funny. Um, John Gray says, a piece of good advice commonly found in books about sex is for women to prepare for sex by taking a long, warm bubble bath with the lights down low. Before I understood the differences between men and women, I could never understand this. If I took a long, warm bath, I would probably fall asleep. <laughs> Relaxation and gentle stimulation are the basis for a woman's arousal. By slowly tracing her body with his fingers and tender kisses, a man will awaken her more erogenous zones which will long to be touched. And yes, it is a lot of work for a guy to get a woman turned on and get her to this place. And this is where I struggled often. It's like, it's not fair for the guy that it takes me so much longer to get turned on and to come and the way I finally have reconciled is this way that the longer a man can focus on my body and on my needs and nourishing me and I'm enjoying it the longer he actually gets to have an opportunity to be in touch with that 
softer side of himself that he's longing to fulfill, that tender, gentle side of himself that his heart needs to. So it's actually doing a man a favor by surrendering to him, getting turned on by his touch. It feels like a stud and it fulfills a deep longing in his heart. So it's giving him a spiritual gift by taking this longer time. Plus, you know, there's nothing to be done about it. That's just the way it is. Now, he also does talk about quickies. It doesn't mean it has to be fast, slow like that every time. You can also have the occasional quickie. But this chapter is just about how to get a woman turned on. So again, a man wants direct stimulation and for a woman's pleasure, a man needs to delay direct stimulation, okay? Now I'm going to read this. This is gonna seem like kind of boring and long and tedious, but this is especially for the men because men are too quick, okay? Often in my appointments, I allow men to be quick for the sake of the appointment, the appointment is for them, but really to get a woman really turned on, you have to really slow down. So for example, to increase her desire, a man may choose to touch her somewhere else and then come back to her breast and then start all over. When he comes back to her breast this time, he may choose to get closer to the nipple. Instead of going directly, he should graze over it as if his touch is unintentional. This gives her a chance to feel her nipple sensitivity and long for more. Then he goes away. Then he comes back to the breast and he should circle the breast for a while. In this case, circling three times is not enough. 10 times longer than he would norm normally wait will probably do the trick. Once he is touching the nipple, he can gently stroke it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The approach should be as though he has all the time in the world. Once he has touched the nipple, he can gently kiss or lick it. A man should begin to touch between her legs only when he thinks she is ready. Sometimes it is good to first touch around the lining of her underwear, panties, and gradually explore her vulva. It is very exciting to her if he doesn't just suddenly pull down her panties. Instead, he may start to pull them down and then pull them back up a little higher. And then he goes on into detail, pull it down a little bit. So, you know, so... Um, I, mean, I just want to give you kind of a sense of slowly building it up, what that might look like and how much patience you need and how much time you need and how a woman, you know, a guy is going to be like, just grab my cock, strip off my underwear and start sucking my dick. Um, Cause he's already turned on, but with the woman you want to build it up. And I want to say that how much a woman is already turned on when you get to bed has so much to do with um, what has happened between both of you before you got to the bedroom. You know, what happened that, what happened an hour before, six hours before, that morning, the day before. Um, though how she feels about the relationship, how relaxed she is, there's so many more factors for a woman. Um, how much she's in love with the guy, how much she desires him sexually, whether she's ovulating or not, ovulation will increase arousal, and how connected she feels to him, how much she trusts him, uh, will already have her pretty turned on. It's not that way for men. <laughs> I know it's not that way for men. And... Even if the man's passion is mounting, he can take a long time. The restraint and control that he uses allow her to feel freer and release her inhibitions and let go of control. And I love it when a man um, uses restraint. 
All right, this ends the first three chapters of the book. <laughs> I'm going to make another video about the other chapters because I feel like these basics are just so important to understanding sexual excitement and arousal. And I just want to end it by saying that I actually had my, well, that's kind of personal, but I want to say that I recently had an experience um, with a lover that um, I had spent some time with before we had sex, and that was non-sexual time. I, um, I don't want to give the details. I feel like that's private. But, but I noticed that when we did have sex the other day, I was already very receptive in my body. I was already a little bit engorged and receptive in my body, even though I don't have any feelings for this man at all. I don't have any romantic feelings for him. But the time, the effort, and the way he treated me, and uh, that he was interested in me, but he wasn't a doormat, and he um, uh, was attentive to me, and appreciated the non-sexual parts of me, and I thought he was hot. I, I, my body was already turned on before we had sex. So the first time I had sex with him, Everything really hurt. His penis was too hard. It was too long. It was pain, kind of painful. I kept having to tell him to slow down. Then we had a non-sex date, which was enjoyable. Again, I have no feelings for him, so this isn't about me having feelings for him. And then the next time I saw him, we had sex again, and it was for filming for my Just For Fans page. So if you are uh, watch that, that's the young man I'm talking about. That next time we had sex after the dinner date oh my god it was so freaking awesome i let him make it all about me nothing hurt it felt so good he was fucking me so hard nothing hurt um and it was because i was already so turned on because i i told him i said the fact that you came over here and we had dinner together is making a huge difference in how I feel about having sex with you right now. And I know it made a huge difference in my body being already open, already being ready, already being somewhat engorged because I was relaxed, I was trusting, and that's the mental space. Again, if I would have desired him emotionally or romantically, that would have even put that on steroids. And that's the difference between a man and a woman. And yet I also want to acknowledge to him, I said, I just want to acknowledge to you that that whole time you spent over here last night, you probably were sexually frustrated. You probably were hard. You probably wanted to have sex with me and we didn't. And I just want to acknowledge that you felt that way. And I had told him before that I wouldn't want to have sex that night. So he knew. So I want to be really conscious of a man's sexual needs too, because when a woman tells a man no to sex, it's like a man telling a woman no to hearing her talk or hearing her talk about her day or hearing her talk about her feelings. It's the same thing. Telling when, when a man is told no to sex, it's like the woman being told no to talking or talking about her day or talking about her feelings. So if a man doesn't want to hear a woman talk about her day, he could say, you know, um, I just need an hour to unwind. Can we talk in an hour? And likewise, a woman has to say, I'm not in the mood for sex right now, but I'm willing to get in the mood. Can you help me get in the mood? Can you give me one hour so I can unwind and get in the mood? That's the same thing. We have to really understand that if we want to get along better in our relationships and because otherwise the other party shuts down their heart. If you, guys, if you don't make a woman feel loved or romance or listen to her talk, it's going to constrict her heart. She's going to feel unloved, unwanted, and rejected. And she's not going to want to have sex because everything is closed down already. A woman has to be open to want sex. Likewise, when we tell men no to sex or that we don't want them sexually, they feel hurt and they feel rejected, then why would they want to listen to us talk? She doesn't even want to have sex with me and now I have to listen to her talk too? I don't know if they think that. I'm imagining that's what they would think. So I think just understanding this gender difference is super, super important. But generally, I think a man has to start by giving. And so I think 
that since a man starts by giving in the early parts of a courtship, I think it's good for a man to keep starting by giving and by giving that woman space to come in touch with her feelings so that then she can come in touch with her sexual desire. Um, but both parties have to play a role. Okay, so that was the um, part one of my video on Mars and Venus in the bedroom. Again, um, here is the book, summarized chapters one through three.